Coach, how do you think his game uh, transitions to the NFL? We are, he seems to be what you're looking for when you talk about quarterbacks, especially now at the NFL where a lot more run-pass situations where you can use your athletic ability. How do you think that translates to the next level? I think it translates well uh, because he is. He's got he's athletically, you know, typically one of the best athletes on the field. But then his ability to uh, to create, his ability to to throw from all different angles, all different platforms, is really really special. Uh, he's continuing to become a better situational quarterback, and the more reps he gets, the better that he's going to be. But he's going to have some advantages physically when he steps on the field with anyone, and it's a that's a great start, and then it'll just be a climb from there. You've been able to coach a lot of successful quarterbacks who have made the jump, both athletic quarterbacks, pocket passers, and everything. He'll be able to continue to play the way he plays at the NFL, you think? Uh, I think his game will have to adapt um, because people, and we saw this some even this year, like people are going to try to defend him differently. You know, and you guys know, like, you know, everybody's going to try to get the book on what works against you and they're going to continue to try different things. And so as a quarterback, you've got to learn to find different ways to win, different ways to move the football and be, and be productive. And so he'll have to adapt because there'll be some people that'll want to keep him in the pocket uh, that'll want to you know make him win the game from that from that uh, perspective he physically certainly can do it and and that'll just be part of his climb and again I think that's why it's so important a guy like this has got to get in the right situation where he's developed he's got the right people around him so that he can continue to climb as a player. Okay, let's talk about the situation around him with the right people. Cliff Kingsbury just got hired by the Commanders to be the offense coordinator. Obviously, he was with you guys last year. Caleb said, my dog, congrats. They're a potential suitor for Caleb Williams. Isn't Pat set up over here? He's like, oh, he doesn't get in until tomorrow, and then I'm learning that it's a Zoom time, and I don't get to see the boys and hug you in person. But, yeah, I'm snuck on your set right now. They got this show. <laughs> I right, got you set up nice. There's JP in the back. Hey, what's up, JP? Man? Hey, I'm, how's the desk? Is the desk seem to be sturdy? That is hilarious. The desk is good. I was working on my I was working on my Pat McAfee pose. <laughs> I was trying to get all this stuff, thank make you. sure everything's set up right. But hey, you're set up nice out here. Thank you for doing that. You and me, ADD both. Make sure that thing can move, get up, get down. You know you got to do it all. You were at – that's hilarious, by the way. Will, oh, you yeah. are – you are a classic human being. Continue to be so, and I can't wait to watch the heights that you'll soar alongside Bustle with the boys, Taylor Lewan. Speaking of, last night you guys kind of won, you know, opening night at the media day. Is that the first time you've been there? What was the energy like, and how do the boys feel? Feels like everybody's kind of calm and ready for the game. Yeah, so last year we got to do Radio Row. We didn't get to hit the media day, but this year we got the credential to get into media days, and it was kind of like we didn't know what to expect. It's kind of, hey, let's kind of use our – our physical, our physical stature to sneak up to the front and then just obnoxiously yell at the boys who kind of knew that we were going to be there and just have like fun questions. Like we got to ask Andy Reid about the cheeseburgers. We got to ask Travis Kelsey. He's like, Oh, I see you got the, the Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I was like, brother, what was it like benching 315? But we just asked a lot of fun questions and it was, uh, it was a great time. Like me and Taylor, well, Taylor sniffed the Super Bowl. I never sniffed the Super Bowl. So just being around all of that, it's, it's been incredible. Okay. So you got some great answers. I did see from Taylor Lewan's question that the New Heights podcast gave credit to Bustin' with the Boys for being the inspo. You know, that is uh, fantastic news. And you said that you wanted to use your physical stature to maybe get some uh, maybe respect from those who are up on the thing. Did you hear this rumor, and obviously you're Tennessee Titan and uh, Coach Rabel's favorite player from what I've been told. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that Diana Rossini said that when she was down at the Senior Bowl, one GM told her that Vrabel's physical stature in those meetings – it's kind of scary to some people, and that might be why he didn't get hired as a head coach after getting fired from the Tennessee Titans. Now, obviously, this is an alley-oop for us to go about a thousand different ways mm -hmm. here on the <laughs> fact that a football coach is not getting hired because he's too much of an alpha, he's too big of a dog, he's in too good a shape, right. he's too much of a specimen. Right. That is what football is in its whole. But how do you feel about that, and what are your thoughts on Vrabes not having a job seemingly in 2024 in the NFL? So I, I think Rave, he's just enjoying his time right now. I think he's he's probably got di a lot of different options. I mean, when you're a, a head coach that gets fired, you got a nice little buyout, so you can kind of sit back and weigh what options, kind of pick your right situation. I saw Diana yesterday. I said, hey, Diana, you're kind of going viral on one of them little bot, those little bot news programs out there. <laughs> and she was uh, she was laughing at us. She was like, yo. She's like, I know, like, they're taking me out of context, yada, yada. But speaking on Mike Vrabel's presence and stature when he walks into a room, that is spot on. Mm. Let's see. From here, 
Mm. Yeah, right there looks good. There you go. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, to kick off this glorious Super Bowl week from Radio Row, Darius J. Butler, who's about to go golf with Phil Mickelson. Yeah. <laughs> He's about to go golf with Phil Mickelson I've learned in real. a matter of moments. If you make this shot, first one of the week, first attempt of the week, 25 people, $500, all they got to do is retweet this post, say something nice to somebody, and... Yep. Yo. Oh. Much. Small ball. Much. We knew it was going to be good. That's tough with the small ball. Hell and yeah. put the easiest way to pay you digitally. D Butch. Hey, here we go, hell, of a, hell of a year this year, pal. <laughs> good luck at the Live Golf Tourney. Hell yeah. Baby Baby Proud Phil. of you, buddy. Proud of you, buddy. Let it Hit the flop shot you know. over your head. All right, boys. See you, buddy. Know, swing hard, D Butch. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Have Hey, you look phenomenal, dude. Yeah, hey, thank you, look, you. You guys look really, great. You look I appreciate really good. that. The hair, the, you look really Super Bowl week. Mm, <laughs> thank Super Bowl you. Week. I appreciate it. So what happened with the gym? You're here for CBS, obviously, because <laughs> yeah. you're covering it. I saw there was a big gym fiasco controversy. What happened with the yes. gym? Yes. So I went to work out in the gym. I got in a little later on Monday. I wanted to go work out. Of course. I mean, I'm why I'm not going to look at the – it was 6.30. I was going to go work out at 6.30. I didn't check the hours. I mean, why, why would you check the hours at 6.30 p.m.? Started my workout. Real nice lather going. A good yeah. sweat. Oh, we're in it. Feeling good. We're in it. Just a nice little tap on the shoulder. Excuse me. Uh, we're close. I said, what are, you, what are you talking about? It's 7 o'clock. She's like, you got to get out. We're close. I literally walked through the, like, the lobby just dumbfounded. I called my wife. I was like, I just got kicked out of the gym. It's 7 p.m. Um, fast forward yesterday. Uh -huh. I'm back in the gym working out. Do my all before 7 p.m. Smart. I leave the gym at 6, and as I'm walking out, they're like, hey, Mr. Watt, we just want to really, really apologize for the inconvenience. We're going to leave the gym open till 9 the rest of the week. Wow. If you need it open till later, just let us know. We'll keep it open later. So first-class hospitality out of Las Vegas. Workout's not going to be a problem, but now... I have to work out to dinner, very late to shows, every night anything, just because, yeah. like, if they keep it open from 7 to 9 just for you, mm -hmm. you have to work no, out from good, 7 to 9. Everybody. Just let them know ahead of time if you're going to yeah. be there late or not. <sighs> this is, once again, J.J. Yeah. Watt making other people's lives better. Yeah. Yep. Think about the number of people that went down there 702. That's oh. like back in the day when they didn't sell egg McMuffins past 1030, and you were in yes. the drive. Like, that's what you did yeah. here. Oh, I got people, hero, but it's, we know how it goes. I got people yelling at me. Right. Now somebody can't be home to eat dinner with their kids because uh. they have to stay at the gym. Uh, from seven to nine. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. Five to ten people probably have to sit there and wait. There's there's a there thousand blackjack dealers on the floor. How come nobody? Like yeah, there's people work. Like that's how like you have. It's, uh, Tell them just to give no. you a key actually. Tell them you'll sign a waiver. It is a key. key. That's what I'm wondering. Oh. It's, you you go in with a key, so like. Well, you know I'm in there. You know it's Super Bowl week. They're not going to let you work out. I'm JJ not walking out with out. a bench press. They, they, like, well, they need to supervise anything. you in case you need a spot. That's probably what yeah. they figure. I mean, I, I think it is truly a liability yeah. issue. That's my guess. Um, you don't let Justin James Watt stay at your hotel and then but, say the gym's closed. Trust me, I agree. Can't do it. But customer service, phenomenal. Immediate correction, immediate whatever you need. What so. hotel uh, are you going to be working out between yeah, we'll, 7 and 9 at the we'll, gym? We'll do it when we <laughs> check out. We'll do it when we check out. <laughs> We love you. Yes. <laughs> you need to know that. For what you did for, like, Pittsburghers, mm -hmm, you're a legend. Hilarious human. I love that city. Did things your own way. Yeah. So speaking of acting, the story is Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Right. You were offered an amount of money, let's say 15 bucks. We don't have to give us the actual <laughs> amount of money, but right. let's say it's 15 bucks. Or a percentage of what the film makes going forward. That's just how I've always seen it. And you said to yourself... Give me the money. What are we talking about? <laughs> and then it goes on to obviously have the success of it. Is that accurate? And did you know that Very you were going to be so Very good accurate. acting in that movie? You almost uh, stole the show in that thing. Yeah. Well, I actually made Jim Carrey a star because it wasn't for me. No one knew who the hell he was. <laughs> yep. So I take full credit for his career. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, we were going to do the movie. At first, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to do it because I read the script, and then I got to meet Jim Carrey. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this could be a lot of fun. And it's either going to do really well or it's going to be nowhere. And uh, so they offer me a percentage of the gross. And knowing me, I didn't take it. <laughs> I, took, I took the short end cash, but that's okay. Yeah, it is absolutely yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I mean, that movie made a lot of money. It did. Oh, yeah. I yeah. couldn't even. It you made over been, $100 million. 
Oh, so you found oh, it. Oh, it's oh, 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 yeah. People yeah, have I'll told you. Still yeah, I, I would have, yeah, they're happy you done pretty good. good. People have said, like, hey, Dan, just a little heads up. This could have been what it is. And, you know, that was about the glorious times of the Miami Dolphins being on top of oh the world. God. A dolphin is obviously kicking field goals and everything's sure. going. Dolphins are all the way back right now, it feels like. Your Uncle Dan in that building. Does it feel <laughs> like it? They're, they're all the way you back? You know what? I, 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 feel, I feel like they're, we're on the road to uh, doing something special down the line. I mean, I felt really good about us. You know this year and as far as going into the season and then as the season went on and then not making excuses but we got kind of devastated with injuries and, and uh, really took its toll on us at the end of the year now you still that's not an excuse because everybody got to play you know you got to play everybody has hurt you know positions that are players and, and uh i think we're close it was awesome watching uh, Hard Knocks with you in there in the building with your relationship with Tua. Well, let, let, let's set up the scenario right now. If I was in the Super Bowl and I played for either one, uh, let, let, let's say I played for the 49ers because I was born in the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rock. yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, here I am out there, seven technique, hand down on the ground. Oh. Who's the tackle? I'm scared. Who's the left tackle? Oh, uh, Donovan Smith. Yeah. Smith. Yep. Donovan Smith. Left tackle for, for Kansas City. Smith. Smith. Okay. Mahomes snaps the ball. Smith steps back. Here comes the rock. Oh! Coming off, coming off that edge. Holy just nasty. Shit. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, boom. Oh, oh, that, that, that. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a little twitch. I almost fell down. Boom. <laughs> left arm coming up. Yep. yep. Uh, which would have been Smith's left arm, boom, oh. down. But at the same time, I'm grabbing. Yeah. Okay. I'm grabbing. Yeah. yeah. Invisible. You go hands. first. You go first. Go yeah. Zip Z. Zip City. Oh, my. Oh, we, well, I, oh sorry. Uh, <laughs> My secret, uh, I, pill, I, I I pour my milk before my cereal. Okay, that's dumb. That's not a secret. <laughs> oh, oh, no, not a secret? Okay. I, don't, I do don't, can't give anything. Why, Why do you do that? Down, you do do it, How do you do that? You get the perfect amount of cereal in there. You know, like you eat a bowl of cereal and then you're like, oh, I have I have more cereal and I don't have enough milk. You got to go pour milk. I, I pour the milk first. Milk. You get the perfect amount of cereal in there. Mm -mm. No, that's never happened to anybody. No. I don't think so. Stick with football. You've never had a bowl of cereal and you've been like, oh, I'm done eating. No, I always, have, I always have milk left over and then I just pour more cereal. Yeah, then, then you're having Boom. two bowls. What are we even talking about? Puka. I don't know if that makes sense. What's your favorite <laughs> cereal? Uh, Reese's Puffs. Yeah. Oh, Not bad. Very good. Banger. That's good. Okay. Remember the rap song they used to have? I'm happy you gave a good answer to that. <laughs> What's your favorite cereal? You know, I'll go CTC. I think everybody likes Ooh. Sam and Toast Crunch, but as I get older, you got to start doing like the adult ones. Yeah. yeah. I like Honey Bunches of Oats with no almonds. Yeah, that's my oh. that's, that's not Reese's Puff. Honey Bunches of Oats. Yeah, Those fuck, fuck almonds. Crazy. Fire. Like Fire. A, I like a Raisin Bran Crunch. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very adult of you. Raisin Bran? Oh, yeah. Crunch, crunch, though. Crunch. Whole milk, whole milk. I'm a fruity pebble. Oh, I'm doing a whole milk. Grass fed whole milk. Yeah, straight from the Cost. Yeah, it was over. But I also knew timing wise, unlike Aaron, I had plenty of time to get ready for 2024. So my hope is to get back fast enough where I can be a part of OTAs, be a part of mini camp. But, you know, my training. Yeah, but I where? Did. Good question. Kirk. Good question. Pittsburgh. That was the answer. Well, probably a yeah. month away. Pittsburgh, maybe? Yeah, Pittsburgh. Steelers. Yeah. Is that, uh, <laughs> you know, Minnesota. You sure. got Justin Jefferson. Uh, he's getting questioned. You're. Obviously, the bell of the ball when it comes to quarterbacks, free agents. Now, <laughs> every team needs quarterback. Every team will try to get a quarterback if they don't have a quarterback. I assume, and Darius said this earlier, we've never seen Kirk Cousins sign a deal and go, bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Nope, ever. Ever. At, we have never Holy seen guarantee. that ever happen. No. Kirk Cousins signs a bad deal. Like, incredible businessman you are. Well, I give Mike McCartney, my agent, a lot of credit, too, because just about every time – we signed a contract. I'm just doing what Mike says. I'm not really thinking for myself too much. So. Well, shout out to Mike, and I assume you're a part <laughs> of the, the whole conversation. But, like, yeah. now you and Mike have had to talk, I assume. And yeah. how do we feel? we got to feel very comfortable with how we've played the last couple of years, obviously, yeah. what we yeah. put on tape. And with the where the league is about wanting and needing a quarterback, people are going to do things. It's like you put yourself in a great position. I assume that's how you yeah. feel? Yeah, I've always kind of viewed that my job is September through January to do all I can. And then when you get to late February and you get to March, I'm kind of more passive and it's okay, now Mike McCartney and the teams have to do their job. And then my job shows up again, you know, on the field in the other month. So my, my job ended a little earlier than I expected when I was on that cart, you know, going off the field in, in, in week eight. But um, I realized, okay, it's over. You know, my part of the deal is over now and I just wait till March to see, uh, to see what happens. And the reality is we're still a month away, you know, so not much is going on. And, in a few weeks, I would think that's when we can start to know more. I mean, it is a lot, Patrick, but that, that, that football team, that culture, 
You know, I, I don't necessarily believe that they're the most talented football team in the league, but at the same time, I do believe that they are the team that plays situational football the best. They're the team that plays, you know, it, they, they play offense and def they play uh, complimentary. Uh, complimentary football. Perfect uh, offense, defense, and special teams. Everybody understands what they under what they need to do in this situation right here, um, which is something that you can that, that I like to study and I like to learn from. You know, how are they? How are they, I mean, that's a dynasty. Let's be honest. Like, yes, that's, that's a dynasty that they have got going on. So how are they? How are they not even as successful as they are, but also being able to su sustain that success in the National Football League? This is the National Football League, and they're going back to the to the Super Bowl. You know what is it? This is a second time out of the th third time in the last five years, or something like that. Yeah. Fourth, yeah. Four, fourth, yeah, that's whatever. Cra I mean, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, so, six, like, yeah. how is that happening? So, like, for me, studying and obviously studying Pat, studying Travis. You know, <laughs> Travis doesn't have a route. You know, Pat <laughs> is just telling, hey, two by two, why off? Get open. Like, that's just his, and they're on the same sheet of music. Each so what do you have to do there as safety, obviously? You guys just say, be like, all right, so one person just has to follow Travis? It's, it's not. It's just, but then he can it's shake. An, it's an awareness, you know, but at the same time, there's so much that happens during the play that Pat is able to, He, I mean, his pocket presence, for one, is probably some of the best that I've ever seen. You know, it's... It, he 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 understands where to move in the pocket and where to that he can escape from, and then he always knows where Travis is, and, and Travis always knows, and, and Travis is not he, as fast as he used to be, but at the same time he still is is able to use his craft, to use his body, to use his leverage, and he's a he's a hard guy when he has the ball in his hands to bring bring down because his, he's at a low center of gravity when he runs. I mean he runs he's running low like this, and people are bouncing off of him, and so just that that like what they've been able to build like i have so much respect for obviously like i hate losing to them like i yeah. i, I yeah. hate it yeah I, it sucked this is the patriots did this for a long time too but it, I, it at sucks. the same time like i have just a lot of respect for what they've been able to do and you know ultimately that's the that's that's the that's the that's the vision that's the goal for all of us young all of us the the athletes before us all of us athletes right now like we want to get there so how do we get there you know continue to study them continue to see how they're building that culture and uh you know it's 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 that's a that's a dynasty so i got a lot of respect for what pat and and andy and, and travis have been able to do over there you kind of mentioned the lakers when you talk about boston this championship of bus i feel like it's always like that with the lakers as well and the warriors i know clay thompson kind of been mad as well is he going anywhere and why didn't the lakers make any moves at this deadline well Clay, let's do the Clay Thompson question. Um, he's also like he wanted an extension. They wanted to get. They, they were discussing a deal. They had frameworks of a deal. Two years, forty-eight million dollars ish. He wanted more. They couldn't reach a, a deal. And I think that's been a part of, you know, when you think about play on the court, um, them as a team. I mean, they're hovering around five hundred. This isn't the season that they wanted it to be. So yeah. I think that's going to be a question going into the summer. He's going to play out obviously the second half of the year. He did not get traded. They're going to want to bring him back, though. I mean, he's been a fabric of their legacy, yeah. of their of their dynasty run. They're going to want him back. And so I, I think we'll see if, if the sides reach a middle ground, will there be another team that comes for Klay Thompson this summer. It's going to be a game of leverage. You know, the, the Grizzlies had interest in Draymond Green. Mm -hmm. That's why he was able to get four years 100 mm -hmm. uh, with the Warriors. As far as the Lakers, I think they had some conversations, mostly around DeJounte Murray this week. But they just didn't feel like there was a move out there that really moved the needle for them. And D'Angelo Russell's been playing at a high level the last month. D'Lo. D'Lo's been playing well for the last last month. Um, and I think they feel confident that this this group, talent-wise, uh, you know, coaching, everything's aligned from a coaching perspective, locker room perspective, that they can move forward and potentially make a run. Anytime you have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you feel that way. Yeah. And But they're, they, they want to get Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, that's a oh. player in, a, in the buyout market. They're trying to sign. Right. Uh, I, I would expect them to meet with him over the next 24, 48 hours, and then decision from him in the coming days, likely between them and the Mavericks. Oh, boy. He's <laughs> doubting you. Oh, my wow. God. Boom. <laughs> All right. Okay. CJ3. No Hold on, Burp, Burp. What is an accurate over-under? What is a proper? 24 oh, wait, and a half. 24. No, what, what's a proper expectation? Yeah. What? What? 40? Yeah. They got to be full. Okay, so we'll wait, do. Wait, wait, but AJ's calling. He's going to give you range you notes. Make, no, 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 no. What is going on? <laughs> what? CJ. We got a strong hamster about to do push ups. <laughs> yeah. CJ, listen. <laughs> None of us know what's going on. Sorry. Uh, no. on, Including me. Do. And I walked in with him. 40? Yeah. All right. All right. You count it, AJ. Come on. One, yeah, two, lock out. Yeah, you got to lock yep. out. Oh, these aren't pushing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can see his horse. We're going. Come on. So. Where's he at right now? 15. Right, 16. Counting. Where are you at, Bert? What number are you at? Don't make him count. All the way up. Somebody else count. No, we missed it already. I know. 
So if we start counting, it's at least 20. Come on. There's 30 right there. There are how many? 30. 30. All the way up. Nine. That's 40. Sure. Come on. Let's get to 50. Know. Let's get to 50. He's been going since early. CJ, this is your fault. No, I stick in here now. Fired up. <laughs> he said 3 a.m. I had an argument with his wife. He lost 50 grand, he said. There you go. Hey, way to go, Bert. Proud of you, Bert. CJ, call to Miko. Yeah. Taylor, right? Uh, yeah. Taylor's, hey. She's the biggest star on earth. Oh, she's, yeah. and, I, and I've known Taylor a long time, and she has done, an, obviously, an unbelievable job. I mean, but she, she's one of the best, you know, Taylor's one of the best songwriters on the planet. She really is. Not just an entertainer, but she really has a creative soul that comes from somewhere, and she's great at it. How do you feel about her dating a football guy? We're pumped about yeah. it. I'm, I, I, you know what? I think I, I, I don't understand the, the negative towards it. Well. Because I, I, I want some. Look, it's hard enough to meet someone, right? Yes. And so when you find somebody that meets someone, they're happy. Let them be happy. Yeah, I agree. But they're both on top of the world. So yeah, everybody's going to want to hate that. Tone's got a question for you. I, I think one of the things that we appreciate as fans, it feels like when we're listening it, it feels like you have in mind where we're gonna be while we're listening like summertime like we're gonna be around a pool a body of water it's gonna be a party like does that go into the creative pr process do you think about where the fans are gonna be listening to where your like your songs at what time of year stuff like that well i do but i i think about just my own existence and what how I grew up, and I think about you know you, you find a song that you, you know whether it's Boys of Fall or whether it's uh, No Shoes No Shirt No Problems yeah. or Summertime or Young whatever it is, you you, you you do have to put yourself okay was is this my life? Can I can, yeah. will, will will people believe me? You know that's what it is. Like it, it, I've always said that that especially the audience that we've built. I mean they're they they can smell a rat pretty quick if it's disingenuous. They'll, they, they'll know.